Today, we're gonna to be showing you guys how we film and edit our motovlog videos. Hi, I'm Lavi. And I'm Ollie. And this is our hero, Bumblebee. Together, we are attempting a Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by, by motorcycle. motorcycle. Join us for season three here in South America. Good morning world, welcome back to the channel. It's day number 224 on our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. So we are starting with setting up the cameras on the bike. We've got them all stored in this box and they've got a sock covering them. Always good to protect the lenses. So we got my favorite camera. Oh, actually, I forgot to check. We have to uh, always check the camera time and date to make sure that we can sync them later when we're editing. That's a really important point because often the GoPros actually uh, messing up the timing. So we have to make sure every day that we check the timing on the GoPros. Right. So I always have to make sure that this GoPro is facing the center of the bike so that it can get the landscape on the left and the right equally got the camera at the front this one's quite easy because you just put it up against the windshield and that's pretty much it did you check the timings oh, no. i did not check the timings <laughs> because my job it is later to get all the footage in the computer and i'm the one who has to match up all the videos and I have to make sure that the timing is right. <laughs> <laughs> 8.49am on the 19th of November. Yes, perfect. This GoPro is not really charged, so I have to plug this one in as we ride along. Luckily, we've got a really cool USB charger on the front. I can then... We lost the door. There we go. For our map sequence at the beginning, we're actually using my iPhone 11. And Oli is always doing the map sequence. So we are here on the coast at Tramandai. And today we are going to be making our way down this thin strip of land in between the ocean and this giant lagoon, all the way down to São José do Norte. sequence done we actually have a checklist on the phone for all the things that we have to do in the morning before we leave so film map sequence check check the camera times check oh wipe camera lenses check <laughs> Unfortunately, our vlogging camera is also the front camera of my helmet. So every time I have to undo it all, put all the vlogging gear away and uh, attach the camera to the front. You can see the massive amount of tape that's holding all of this audio gear together. <laughs> So Lavi is actually hardwired with a lapel microphone into an audio splitter here that my microphone is also going into. And then that goes all the way and behind into the GoPro with the media mod on. So it's a little bit complicated, but it works sometimes. We normally try to film everything with our vlogging setup to get a better quality. But if it's not possible, then we use the iPhone that Lavi's using at the moment. The vlogging kit goes here. Just in the front for easy access. So that's all the cameras set up. So it's time to get our gear on and hit the road. So cameras are on. Now Lavi will plug her mic in. Good morning, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so to double check if the sound is working, I actually have to check on the GoPro here in the front on Ollie's chin. My mic is working. 
It looks like that Ollie's mic is working too. <laughs> <laughs> but until we check the footage, we can only hope. <laughs> it's the best we can do for now. Fire up, baby. Oh yes, here we go. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> We're leaving this nice little holiday camp place with the beautiful pool in the middle. That was actually quite a big pool. Yeah, it was super nice. Super nice. Look at this one here. This is lovely. Wow. It's got a bit like American Wild West vibes. So I will just drop off the keys. Sweet. So I have to unplug now. <laughs> yeah, Lavi has to unplug every time she gets off the bike. Even when we fall over, Lavi has to try to unplug the mic before it rips everything off the helmet. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh. <laughs> Okie dokie. Artichoke. Back in. Awesome. Ready to hit the road. Good morning. Good morning, Horsey. Yeah, I don't know why councils in the UK, you know, hire people with mowers to go all over the verges when, you know, these guys will do it for free. It's true. And they need it. So today we are going to be heading as I said in the map sequence down this thin strip of land next to the largest lagoon in Brazil and the largest coastal lagoon in South America. Crazy stuff. And then try and find a nice place where we can find a camp for the night. Today we have about 211 miles, which is about 340 kilometers. Quite a long way. Our navigation says it will take us about five hours. So for us, probably more like eight hours. <laughs> Look at all these guys fishing off the bridge. Whoa. Ho -ho. This must be a really good spot. <laughs> wow. Crazy. camera is frozen. The front camera is frozen at the moment. This is something which happens all the time. <laughs> so we have to turn on and off the camera a few times until it's working. This is the issue with being on the coast road is that sometimes it disappears and becomes a lot of sand. So Lavi's just jumped off and I'm gonna make my way through this little sandbar. Okay. Whew, yeah. I'm definitely still a little bit traumatized from our time in. Oh, it's okay. I think it's still a tad sandy. Give me a minute. <laughs> Let me just get to this cobbling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's better. Whew. <laughs> yeah, still traumatized from our time in Morocco, Mauritania, Senegal. Looks like a bit of sand in the road coming up, so we're going to take it quite easy here. Yeah, those were some sandy adventures. Definitely. We had to deal with a lot of sand. The one time where I actually rode the scooter in the sand. Yes, slide in the sand. <laughs> so we'll have to take a slightly more inland road now because that coast road is just too unpredictable. I think we can take this one, my navigation says. There we go, a bit smoother. Look at the size of these dunes here. That's beautiful. It's almost like we're back on the Moroccan coast. And look at that, you've got the ocean just here and just 
sandy dunes all around. It's very pretty here. Look at this. Tunnel Verde, this is called. The Green Tunnel. Impressive, very impressive. Whoa! It truly is a green tunnel. The trees are almost completely covering the road. Super cool. Wow. Keeps you very nice and cool as well. Yeah, that's lovely. That is lovely. If only they could plant a green tunnel all the way through the desert, that would be cool. <laughs> yes. Better than that. So we got in the habit now that we are not filming more than three minutes if we want to include some music videos in our episode. And we're doing it this way that we turn on all the cameras. We are not talking. Oli is beeping in a minute. And then after the three minutes are over, I will just take my phone and take some shots as well from the surroundings. And after we can just combine it and make a nice music section. Yeah, and we choose to do that a couple of times during the day and we decided that here is pretty pleasant with the forests and the fields. So we decided that now's the time to do a music video. So first I do this. And it begins. That is three minutes. Wow! Guys, there's some emus in this field. Wow! Oh. Not even joking. Wow! Whoa! I had no idea that they have emus here. It's like a whole family. <sighs> How cool! Wow, nice. How cool! I really don't know if these guys are native or whether the farmer has like ah. put them there because ah. you can see there's two more over there, there's yeah. a whole group of them I think that's something we're going to have to look up whether there is something in South America like a rhea or something which is native or if it's just emus from Australia <laughs> <laughs> Wow! Amazing! Oh man that's so cool! Yeah, but the emus in Australia were, were way bigger, no? I don't know. They look quite small. Lavi and I lived in Australia for about two years, by the way. <laughs> so emus for us are like <laughs> good memories. <laughs> so I just looked it up and these are not emus from Australia. These are rears. They're actually native to South America. Amazing. That's so cool. Wow. It's so awesome to see them because they are probably like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight birds. And I looked it up and they live across grasslands in South America, Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, Bolivia, Peru. But I had no idea these birds were here. This is amazing. Yes, really special, really special. Apparently there's also a feral population in Germany and in England where uh, groups of rears escape from farms and now they're just like living across the European countryside as well. <laughs> so cool! Uh, apparently there was a population of like 600 rears in the north of Germany. <laughs> <laughs> nice, there's a nice beautiful bit of wildlife for you before we leave Brazil, that's awesome! So we're turning off the main road now and uh, going to look for a place to have some lunch in this small town here called Tavares. And Tavares had a big statue just at the beginning at the roundabout of a flamingo. 
Yeah, I think they said they have flamingos here, no? On the lagoons, on the inland side, they have flamingos. Awesome. It would be cool to see some flamingos. <laughs> see if we can find like the Central Avenue. Look at this place. Yeah, it's funny, eh? It's quite cute actually, yeah. Kind of reminds me of those remote towns in Australia. <laughs> Oh, there's like sand all over the road. Just this place here. Can go and check it out. Okay, let's see what they've got. Yeah. Bon dia, bon dia. Bon dia. Bom dia. Ok. Interesting. Some olives. Some of these things, some chips, we've got some beans prepared from yesterday so we don't need any beans. Oh, that'll do, just this one. <laughs> Cartão, cartão. Quanto custa? Sete reais. Obrigado. Obrigado. So they didn't have very many chips left, okay. but they had these things, okay. which are like, it's like a giant chip. Okay. So I thought we could just have that with some beans. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. So it's lunchtime now, and to get better audio and better video, I have to actually take the GoPro off the front of the helmet and put it back on the vlogging setup. Sometimes we're a bit lazy and we just use the phone, but you'll appreciate the audio with this big fluffy mic in wind like this. What you got there? <laughs> Bread rolls! And then we have some boiled eggs. I have a cucumber here. It's almost a feast. Bon appetit. Let's try this uh, one of these out. Dipping it in the beans, of course. Mm. I just looked it up and I think it's made of corn. Disculpe. 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 It's, it's Milo? Milo. Milia. Milia. Wow. There we go. Polenta. 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 Okay. okay let me see. Polenta. Okay. Cooked cornmeal. Ah. Cooked cornmeal. There you go. Polenta. Have a look here. There's another flamingo, like the one on the roundabout that I was telling you about. Look at this. Cool. Now it's just time to see some real flamingos. <laughs> what a nice town mascot. Tavares, the town of flamingos. So although you can't see it at the moment, we are actually at our closest point and pretty close to the largest lake in Brazil and the largest coastal lagoon in South America. It's just behind those trees <laughs> where we can't see anything. 
<laughs> I was hoping that we'd be able to see it but anyway and this lagoon is called Lagoa dos Patos and it's really cool it covers an area of 10,000 square meters and it's about 180 miles long or 290 kilometers and the widest part is 44 miles or 71 kilometers so it's absolutely huge <laughs> it's absolutely massive on the other side of us is actually a national park it's only a thin thin national park because the ocean is just in front and the national park is called Lagoa do Paixi ah I can see the lagoon just 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 behind that gap of trees there just just about so the lagoon is actually home to dolphins which is kind of crazy and at certain times of the year apparently you can see southern right whales at the estuary the point where it meets with the ocean which is called Rio Grande so that's pretty cool we've got the ocean on one side and a giant lagoon on the other and we can see neither of them <laughs> <laughs> it looks a lot cooler on the map so this relatively narrow strip of land that we're riding on now uh, it's about it's a few kilometers wide um, and this is actually an ancient sandbar that built up over time on the edge of the coast and it just became so big that people started to farm on it <laughs> pretty crazy so even though we can't ride on sand we're actually riding on a huge sand dune <laughs> <laughs> exactly this area is also home to an immense amount of bird life there are birds migrating from the south and the north that come to this area including as we saw in Tavares flamingos <laughs> yes we did see flamingos on this trip already when we were in Senegal and there is some flamingos nice whoa I have to stop for a second which was awesome So we are coming now into the town of São José do Norte and this is our destination for today it's actually the last town that you can drive to on this sandbar because this sandbar that we're on now isn't connected to the other side there's actually a river the Rio Grande which separates this side from the other side and there's no bridge so you have to actually take a ferry to cross it which we will be doing tomorrow but for today we decided to camp on this side and take the ferry first thing tomorrow we found one place on Iovalanda and it is apparently for free I don't know if we are allowed to pitch up the tent there so we will go there now and check it out and hope for the best so it says yeah. that the camp is basically here uh -huh. okay there's a military place okay maybe let's ask the military place okay all right let's check it out so they said it's absolutely fine for us to camp just over there on the grass next to the police station how cool okay this is the place right behind the kids playground so we can go for a swing on the swings <laughs> place for us yes 
playground garden <laughs> and you can see in the background over there is actually the Rio Grande river that connects the massive lagoon to the ocean so we're definitely going to have a walk and have a look at that just after but I think it's time to set up our camp Good evening guys! We made it! Happy and alive! Yeah, we've built up our camp here in São José do Norte Bumblebee, camp, everything's pretty good It's amazing that we found so easily and quickly a place that it all worked out uh, that the police were very nice to let us camp here Yeah, super friendly! Thanks so much guys! So it was a pretty chilled day of riding down this sandbar today. I pretty much had the cruise control set to 45 nearly the whole way. So it was really nice, slow pace, very enjoyable, beautiful sunshine. You can't ask for more. And I got 70 miles per gallon on this ride today, which is the best miles per gallon we've ever had. So that's the way to save a little bit money on petrol. <laughs> So that's it from us today. Tomorrow we will take the ferry here over to Rio Grande for our last ride here in Brazil. So we did at the end 214 miles, which is about 340 kilometers. Pretty long ride. So we're pretty tired now. <laughs> it's time for bed. <laughs> but we really hope that you enjoyed the video and our little behind the scenes explanation, how we film and set up things. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below, and we will see you next time. So I'm just having a little walk down from our camp over there. Look at this. What are they? What are they? Whoa, look at this. There's a massive pier. And you can see all the fishing boats along on this side, this side. Wow, look at this. Oh, this pier is wobbling quite a bit. I'm not sure about this. Ooh. Okay, I've made it to the end. Wow, look at this river. Crazy. So up river this way, that's the Lagoa, the lagoon, and on this side is the ocean. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful if I don't fall in the river. So my last job of the day is to get all the footage from the GoPros on this USB stick here. This is our computer, this is how it looks like. <laughs> it's got a cracked screen, I don't know if you can see, and it's about 10 years old, but it works just about. <laughs> so I will load on now the stuff from our um, front camera here. Oh no, I deleted everything. What? I deleted all the shots. <laughs> <laughs> How was my acting? <laughs> oh, you joker. Now I clear now all the cards, that the cards are empty and ready for tomorrow. So that's it from the behind the scenes. See you tomorrow.